Night Beat starts right now. Imagine you're the one wiping the tears away from the three orphan children. Left behind, friends in shock as a father who was killed leaves three children behind and they say the justice system failed that family. And Pfizer focusing on a vaccine just for the Omicron variant. We're going to speak with local researchers who are in the same mindset when it comes to another strategy during this pandemic. That's coming up. But first, a celebration marred by gunfire. We begin with new details in that deadly shooting at a local Martin Luther King Jr. gathering. Witnesses sharing what they saw just moments before shots were fired. Yeah, those details were released the same day that a suspect was arrested in the case. 18 year old old Wallace, you see him there in the middle. He didn't say much as he walked past our cameras, but an affidavit is shedding some light on the case. In it, a mother told police that she recognized Wallace from an apartment complex where she used to live. She told police that Wallace was walking suspiciously with a gun under his left arm before he started shooting. And according to that same affidavit, that mother's child spoke with Wallace before the shooting. Police say they still don't know why Wallace fired into a crowd outside of a bar called Santa's Place on Springsdale. Five people were shot, one of them died. The charges against a capital murder suspect have been dropped and now friends are fuming over the death of a taxi cab driver in San Antonio. Now, friends of the murder victim say that prosecutors failed. They tell the night team's Patty Santos that their calls for justice are being ignored. I'm disappointed, I'll be honest, with the police that from day one. A friend of Adam Searcy, Fatima Lea, is furious with the Bear County District Attorney's Office and Wincrest Police for the release of a suspect believed to be involved in his 2019 shooting death. I felt like the District Attorney's Office slapped me in the face and slapped all of the Somali community in the face. On January 17, 2019, Searcy was shot to death while parked in the lot of a Wincrest thrift store. Police believe he was the victim of an attempted robbery. Online court records show capital murder charges against Baldemar Hinojosa were dropped last week due to insufficient evidence. His October 2021 arrest affidavit named two other individuals. The affidavit said investigators had DNA evidence of one person who linked Hinojosa and another man to the shooting, video of a white Kia soul at the scene, and a shell casing that linked this shooting to a gun used in a previous incident. In a statement, the DA's office said this case can be refiled at a later time with more evidence. Wincrest police could not discuss the case but said the investigation is ongoing. The killer is walking the street and tomorrow they can kill whatever they need. Searcy's former roommate wants justice for his hardworking friend. That guy is a happy man, help the people, he likes, enjoy, every time he's happy laughing. Anyone know the Adam, when the day he, he passed away, we go to the grave and they're crying because they lost friends. He came to the U.S. to provide for his family, three children, and a village in Somalia. That was our Patty Santos reporting. Now, if you have any information that could help close this case, Call the Wincrest Police Department. As you said, as you heard them say, this investigation is still ongoing. That number 210-655-2666. Bear County leaders just said yes to millions of dollars in overtime pay. Now, 69,000 hours it works out to, to be exact. Sheriff Javier Salasad says that it's for workers at the county jail. And he went before county commissioners today. He said that deputies are leaving or retiring. Others are getting sick with COVID and point blank. They're all spread thin at the jail, so this money is a must. He acknowledged that his office is probably going to go over budget on OT, but also said that other sheriffs in Texas have the same exact problem. Other sheriffs and I have, have, have talked about how, what, what can we do to keep that from happening. We know we're going to blow out our budgets to a certain extent. It's just a matter of trying to minimize that. Uh, Bear County had more than $8 million budgeted for jail overtime, but county staff say that right now it's on track to spend almost $14 million. Well, Let's talk about the COVID numbers right now. Another increase in hospitalizations among COVID-19 patients. 1,277 people are in our area hospitals. 286 in intensive care, 119 on ventilators. 15 more deaths were also reported. And new tonight, vaccines that are specific 
to variants. That's right. Pfizer announced today that it's starting trials to create a vaccine that is specific to Omicron. The night team's Lee Waldman spoke with Texas Biomedical Researchers about the need for this when it comes to battling the virus. They're specifically targeting the Omicron because many people are now becoming infected. While Omicron cases are surging, there is good news. A study released today by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention shows cases are not as severe as with previous variants. 13% of people infected with Omicron are hospitalized compared to 18% with the Delta variant. The vaccines that are currently out there are protecting people from hospitalization and serious disease. Despite that, that Pfizer announced today they'll begin testing a COVID shot specifically targeting the Omicron variant in adults. Dr. Tracy Boss with Texas Biomed says this is a smart move because it allows us to be prepared for what could come next. We want to be prepared for what might be coming, even though that doesn't come to fruition. They, they want to be prepared for that option if people really need that new dose to uh, combat the Omicron. She explains it's similar to what happens with the flu shot each year. Science Scientists are constantly trying to prepare for the next strain. So this is going to be another tool to put in the toolbox and be ready to pull out when you need that. Texas Biomed is using that variant specific mindset in the development of a new monoclonal antibody treatment with Artis Pharmaceuticals. There is a new piece in this cocktail that does target the Omicron. Unlike other monoclonal antibody treatments, two of which were limited in use today by the FDA, this new treatment would specifically cover and treat the Omicron variant. It targets a piece of the virus that the virus cannot really modify because it's super important to the virus in order to function. So it can't mutate in that area. It has to hold steady. That monoclonal antibody treatment that she mentioned is still in the preclinical stage, so Dr. Boss isn't sure when it'll be ready for use. But something else that makes it very unique, it can be self-administered in a similar way to how we see inhalers being used. That'll free up hospital and clinic space and prevent you from getting an IV. Live downtown, Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Now, Lee, thank you. Now, so for now, doctors are encouraging people to get the booster shot to protect themselves from that Omicron variant. Only children as young as 12 years old are eligible for that shot. As of right now, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention say that only 40 percent of people in the United States actually have that booster. There's also another concern that we've been talking about, and that is COVID-19 and diabetes when it comes to kids. We spoke with pediatric endocrinologist from UT Health San Antonio during our KSAT Q&A. Dr. Jane Lynch says that children may have two to three times higher risk of getting diabetes now than compared to the pre-pandemic era. She says that children who are predisposed to the illness are at higher risk. Listen. All right, I guess we don't have the soundbite from that doctor, but let's move on now for a look at other headlines making the rounds tonight. Investigators want to know who put two bodies in an abandoned oil tanker trailer. A tech stop worker actually found the bodies of two men yesterday. This is near Seguin off Highway 90. We still don't know the names of the men found or how they died. If you have any details about this case, call the Guadalupe County Crime Stoppers. They're number 1-877-403-TIPS. Local Congressman Henry Cuellar talking publicly for the first time since FBI agents searched his home in Laredo. Cuellar took to his campaign's Twitter account to issue this response. As I said last week, I'm fully cooperating with law enforcement and committed to ensuring that justice and the law is upheld. There is an ongoing investigation that will show that there was no wrongdoing on my part. A lot we still don't know in this case. It's not clear what the FBI was looking for last week or what the investigation is about. Cuellar has not been charged with any crime. And a local high school student found with a gun. This all unfolding northeast of San Antonio at Steele High School. The shirt Cibolo Universal City Independent School District says the student showed a gun to another student while in a campus bathroom. Two students then alerted school staff. That student taken into police custody. The gun was not loaded, had a trigger lock in place. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. 
And today we had wide ranging temperatures. We'll jump into those details in a moment. First of all, what's happening now? 51 degrees outside. Temperatures gradually falling off this evening. We'll be above freezing tonight and tomorrow morning. You know, I think we'll start the day right around 44 degrees, so pretty close to average for this time of year. We'll talk about our next cold front when that hits, what it means for temperatures and even some rain chances coming up, Steve. Thank you, Adam. U.S. troops already on alert. Now a warning from President Joe Biden to Russia. The latest on the conflict in Ukraine coming up. And San Antonio's art scene taking center stage. A well-known downtown gallery is finally welcoming the public, but as one door opens, could another be closing? And police say one man left a trail of destruction in his wake. His own father killed, a police dog stabbed, where Houston police ended up finding this suspect. It's next on The Night Beat. He's accused of trying to steal a car, stab an officer's dog, and may now be involved in his own father's death. 26-year-old Ryan Mitchell Smith arrested in Houston tonight. Investigators say Smith was first accused in an attempted carjacking and store robbery on Saturday. Officers caught up with him, but police say that's when Smith stabbed their police dog. Smith later released on bond and concerned family members called police to the home once again on Monday. The body of Smith's father found in the garage. Smith disappeared into a wooded area, leading police on a chase. He was later found walking along a highway. We continue to look at what's happening in the Ukraine. Russia denying it would attack that country, but President Joe Biden warning Russia will face severe consequences if there is an invasion. A senior Biden administration official telling ABC News economic consequences may include export controls and sanctions as part of an attempt to cripple Russia's economy. 8,500 U.S. troops on heightened alert tomorrow. France and Germany expected to join in talks with Russian diplomats. New tonight, two steps forward, one step back. While the city is reopening, it's gallery and historic market square to the public for the first time since 2019. However, City Council is also cutting funding for future art projects. The Centro de Artes Gallery is going to open tomorrow. The latest exhibit is meant to tell the stories of dozens of local artists who are also immigrants. They represent 12 different countries. All of them were paired up with experienced artists associated with the New York Foundation for the Arts as part of a mentorship program. It's a platform that the city says is very important. That is the heart of what we do, giving artists a place to display their works, especially artists who have historically through time uh, been excluded from spaces. So you can visit the Centro de Artes Gallery for free. It's open Wednesday through Sunday. So now to that other side of the art discussion facing the city. We showed you the protests earlier this month as some committees suggested that city council cut future public art projects within a bond proposal. That money would be redirected to other projects for streets and parks. But that's not a done deal just yet because city council is supposed to vote on this next month and then you, the voter, will decide what happens with the bond proposal. Also happening here at home, it's that time of the year again. The San Antonio River getting a deep cleaning. Crews pulled out chairs, cell phones, laptops, even a stroller. <laughs> the process is not over yet. The plan is to continue cleaning through Sunday. Now, in years past, crews have found everything from spoons to scooters. There are two reasons why this cleanup happens in January. Tourism usually low around this time and crews don't have to deal with the South Texas heat. I get the spoons because there's so many restaurants by exactly. the Riverwalk. The other stuff, you know, not so much, but all right, at least, oh, look, that creepy looking doll. Yeah, what, yeah, yeah no, the creepy looking too. doll, yeah. <laughs> One of the guys said that they, uh, somebody was looking for an engagement ring they oh, threw into the river, no. and they have yet to find any no. engagement rings Ooh, in the San muddy. Antonio River. A little yeah. too muddy. I'm waiting for the prankster some year just to find something really funny and odd to just Drop it and wait till, you know, somebody finds it. Yeah, 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 yeah. until we drain it. Maybe the jokester that put that doll in there. <laughs> Could <All right>. be. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Every two years we do that. It's a good thing it's not in the summertime, partially because of the odor. Imagine that with oh. the heat. <laughs> 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 hey, it's not dinner time for people, right? Yeah. All right, below yeah. average afternoons ahead. And we're going to talk about temperatures and what the trend has been so far this month in a moment. I do want to talk about rain chances, too. Just another slight chance as we get into Thursday night, early Friday morning. Sunny and comfortable this weekend. If you're looking for just a beautiful weekend, 
Get ready for this one. It's going to be sunny and comfortable. But let's talk about rain. Of course, we need some rain around here. And you look at not just the month, but the winter as a whole, and we're running well below average. So far since January 1st, we've had under two tenths of an inch since December 1st, which is the start of meteorological winter. So that's where we start our winter records, meteorologically speaking, December 1st. And we've had just over an inch, but that's about two and a half inches below average. That's officially at the airport, of course, in town, our official reporting and climate site. So let's take a look at the next system that's dropping into Texas. Keyword, just Texas, not our part of Texas, unfortunately. It's been dumping some snow, New Mexico, Colorado, even stretching into Kansas and Oklahoma. This big dip in the upper level flow here moving into northern New Mexico. That's going to push through northern Texas tonight and tomorrow. Probably bring some snow to parts of the panhandle, some accumulating snow up there. So it might be fun to check in on some of their uh, traffic cameras throughout the day tomorrow. But around here, we'll just have a decent amount of cloud cover. Tomorrow, Thursday, a gray day. May look like it's going to rain, but a sprinkle at best. It's Thursday night into very early Friday morning. That's when our next cold front moves in along with some upper level energy and notice how even our future cast is painting just a few showers here and there on the radar screen, possibly early, early Friday morning. We're talking pre dawn hours on Friday and the best chance is actually south of Highway 90 and we're not expecting much in terms of accumulations, but if anybody needs it the most. It's folks south of Highway 90, especially Dimmit, LaSalle, McMullen counties. That's where we need the rain the most, and that's where we're most likely to see some. Not even expecting a drought denting rain, just just a little little spritz here and there, maybe a tenth to fifteen hundredths of an inch in some spots. But chances wise, we're thinking about 30% coverage across our area, and that's about it. So let's talk temperatures. You see a lot of colors on this calendar here. Blue indicates the temperature for the day being below average. Red indicates above. Yellow means exactly average. It's not often we're exactly average, but this month we've had four days that way. And so far, January as a whole, we're 1.8 degrees below average and quite a contrast to the second warmest December we've ever had on record. So January so far below average and it's going to be that way through Friday. Then we're going to see the temperatures rise. So today we made it to 59. That's here in San Antonio, but 78 Del Rio. We were at 70s closer to the Rio Grande, but only 53 in New Braunfels. Bolverde at a high of 48 because of the clouds made all the difference. Clouds locally and east of town Kept, kept the temperatures down. But right now, most of us in the 40s and 50s, Kerrville 46, Uvalde 49, 51 San Antonio, and Del Rio well into the 50s. But by tomorrow morning, most of us in the low to mid 40s, some upper 30s in parts of the hill country. But by the afternoon, we're talking 50s, even near 60 farther south, Catula, Beeville, Tilden area, about 60 degrees. But those of you that were in the 70s, Del Rio, Camado, Eagle Pass, very different story tomorrow. 53 Helotus, 55 New Braunfels, Lavernia, 57 the high, and a considerable amount of cloud cover. We'll see some breaks in the clouds, but generally speaking, a gray day. There's that slight chance of rain Thursday night. Also make it a little breezy on Friday, but look at the weekend. Sunny, 60s in the afternoon, but cool mornings in the low to mid 30s. Oh, that's looking good, Adam. Thank you. All right, whatever the Spurs did tonight, just they need to keep doing it. Bottle you it. Bottle it and just <laughs> unleash it here a few more times. That's a game they had to win. It's a game they had to dominate because yeah. they have another game tomorrow at home against Memphis. When we come back, we'll show you how they dominated their I-10 rivals. In fact, the starters got a little bit of a rest in the fourth quarter. And Sean Bates stepping aside coming up. John D. Murray and the Spurs need to win badly, and the table was set in Houston tonight as the Silver and Black took on the struggling Houston Rockets. The Spurs catch fire late in that first quarter. DeJounte wide open for the straightaway three. That cuts the Rockets' lead down to three. A little later, Kelton Johnson behind the arc connects, and the Spurs take the lead, 25-23. Doug McDermott dials up a corner three, and the Spurs end the quarter on a 21-4 run. Lead by 11 going to the second. Murray to McDermott, who attacks the lane, throws down the huge one-handed jam. Not to be outdone, Jakob Pertl spins baseline, slams home the two handed punch Spurs in control 66 51 at halftime with well, the game tomorrow night the Spurs needed to put away the Rockets in the third quarter to get some guys a little rest Spurs attacking the rim white to Kelton he throws it down Murray rips the ball away from Christian Wood starts the break he gets it ahead to Kelton for the layup at a 23 point lead Murray with another assist this time to Drew Eubanks he slams it down final seconds of the quarter white the bounce pass to Lonnie Walker the fourth he hammers home the two handed punch and the lead is up to 32 Spurs score 105 
five points in three quarters, 105-74. 11 of the 12 Spurs scored at least two baskets tonight, and eight in double figures. Spurs roll the Rockets 134-104. to Yeah, I think we're disappointed with the result against Philadelphia. So showed a little bit today. I think there was a little bit more urgency to us. Um, and yeah, we managed to find a rhythm early in the game and it really carried over for, for the rest of the game. All right, tomorrow night, back-to-back -back games, the second game with Memphis tomorrow night at 7.30. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Congratulations to Cowboys linebacker Micah Parsons, has been voted as a Rookie of the Year and the Defensive Rookie of the Year by the Pro Football Writers of America. It's after he posted a Cowboys rookie franchise record 13 sacks and tied for the lead in the NFL with 20 tackles for a loss, and most by a Cowboys linebacker since 2017 when Sean Lee did it. Parsons won the NFL's Defensive Rookie of the Month both in November and December, the first time a Cowboys player has won Back-to-Back -back Player of the Month awards on defense or offense. This also makes him one of the top candidates for Defensive Rookie of the Year and Defensive Player of the Year. Only one player has ever won both as a rookie, and that was Lawrence Taylor back in 1981. Parsons has already been named at the Pro Bowl and All-Pro after his incredible performance this season. As the Dallas Cowboys wrestle with their early departure from the NFL playoffs, now the offseason work begins, and that starts with as many as 21 free agents. And among those whose contract is ending is defensive end Randy Gregory. He appeared in 12 games and would have been a Pro Bowl selection had it not been for a calf injury. But in just 12 games, Gregory is able to produce six sacks and force three fumbles. Now the question is, do the Cowboys reward him? But you also have to consider safety J. Ron Kurse, the Cowboys' leading tackler, is also a free agent after his first season of wearing the star. But keep in mind, wide receiver Michael Gallup is also a free agent, coming off a shortened season thanks to a torn ACL. But before that, he has rolled up almost 3,000 yards receiving and 15 touchdowns in four seasons. But with limited cap room available at a lot of the talent could be walking out the door. After 16 years, Sean Payton has decided to step aside as the head coach of the New Orleans Saints, but in a press conference held today in the Mardi Gras City, he stopped short of saying he is retired. He still has three years remaining on his latest contract extension that he signed in 2019. An emotional Payton was asked, why now? I just felt like this season But it was challenging for everyone. But man, I felt like it was time. I felt like it was time. You know, I kind of knew maybe heading into training camp this might. But you don't, you, you, you know, you don't share that with anyone. You think, well, let's see how the season goes, and we're working hard, and and I felt the time was right for me. Yeah, he had to fight through that, didn't he? High school basketball next. Girls High School Hoops, District 28-6A, Brandeis taking on Johnson. Critical battle for playoff position. Broncos looking to rally late in the third quarter. Inbounds pass to Alexis Parker for the hoop. Counted plus the foul. Parker had a team high 34 points. Brandeis cuts that lead down to 13 midway through the fourth. But Johnson answers, answers. Nice ball movement. Finds Sierra McDermott in the corner for the three. She hits it. Jaguars pull away and they win it 79-61. Same district of Paul Taylor Fieldhouse. Churchill taking on Clark. Late second quarter. Cougars turning defense into offense. Ariana Roberson with a block. Caitlin Whitlock picks up the loose ball. Takes it the distance for the lay-in 37-21. Cougars. Then few plays later. Whitlock returns a favor finding Roberson with a long pass to the lay-in. Clark stays perfect in district play 66-35. Boys hoops tonight. District 28-5A. Harlandale hosting McCollum. Indians trying to rally in the third quarter. Jeremiah Harrison drives baseline finds Pedro Valenzuela for the easy layup. That makes it an 11 point game, but the Cowboys answer right back. Dalen Gonzalez kicks it out to Donovan Mancha for the corner three. That's good. McCullum, by the way, rolls 54-41. More highlights on our website, kset.com. Our Andrew Seeley was driving on two wheels I think most of the night trying to get to all these games. I was wondering if McCullum Harlandale was as big a rivalry in basketball as Absol it is in oh, football. Oh, yes, absolutely. And I looked up in the stands and it was <laughs> yeah. packed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Greg. We'll be back in two minutes. The KSAT web team found the stores with the biggest winnings when it came to lottery tickets and scratch offs for all of last year. They have them all mapped out for you in Bear County and several surrounding counties. You can take a closer look on KSAT.com. If you want to go to the other places and avoid those. All right. Well, that does it for the night beat. Don't forget that Good Morning San Antonio starts at 430. Have a great night.